Hello my lovely ravens, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chantel and today, as you can see, we're doing something a little bit different. I have this big color wheel with various aesthetics in front of me and from that I'm going to pick via Pinterest what I'm going to create. Now there is a few things that I need to consider for miniatures, which is it needs to have two walls and a floor. If it doesn't have that in the image, I will move on to the next image. Also, I need to want to build it. Anyway, let's um spin the wheel and see where we uh where we land. Vintage Parisian. Okay. Let's have a look. Okay, we can do something with that. I really like this one. Um, there's definitely two walls and a floor and a bed. And then there's this dresser. However, what if we combine that with this fireplace and the chair in the corner? I think that would look rather nice. A little bit different and a little bit more bright for this build. I'm starting out with the floor here. These are pre-cut popsicle sticks and my father-in-law, he cut them for me just with a jigsaw, I believe. So um, there's that. And I have a little helper here. This is my daughter Liliana and she was helping me out. She is five now, just turned five and she wants to be absolutely everywhere. Anyway, I'm trimming off the excess of the floorboards and then I'm adding a little lip on the sides here because the walls that I cut, which I cut with my laser cutter that you can see here, I cut them a little bit too short and the window was just too low. And to help that problem, I just raise off the, up the floors a little bit and so the window sits a little bit higher so I can add the trim at the bottom of the floor as well as on the top. And this is just me making a little window just out of some wood and some acetate. And moving on to painting the floor, this was so satisfying to do because after sanding all the floorboards, and then adding this layer and also this layer of gray it gives this really rustic antique look and i'm also adding this canuba wax on top so it gives it that wood sheen that you otherwise wouldn't really get with miniatures by the way i'm really hoping that you all like this new idea of spinning the wheel and adding some new aesthetics in my ro rotation of videos i've been craving some more colors in my builds lately and with doing the harry potter stuff i love the harry potter world don't get me wrong but it's all brown black gray and very dull coloring unless you go into a honey jukes or whatever but you can also make, only make so many of those shops. And um, yeah, I just I just was craving for something different, something more real, real in the sense of I see a room and I will recreate it in miniature, kind of real. Over here, I'm making some ornaments. These are silicon molds and you can get them really anywhere. I will list where I got mine in the description box below. And these are the uh, fleur-de-lis elements that I will be adding to the wall. Now, um, when you work with this kind of clay, this is polymer clay, it needs to bake in the oven according to the instructions. And this one I used um, Super Sculpey Ultra Light or, or something like that it's called. And um, it stays a little bit flexible. I, I was surprised about that, but um, it stays a little bit flexible. And then adding here the strips of cardboard to add that little extra detail to the walls as well. Most of the glue that I'm using in this video is going to be wood glue. And that's also what I'm attaching the fleur de -lis to the wall with. By the way, this is obviously a challenge kind of video where I don't know what the wheel is going to pick for, what kind of aesthetic the wheel is going to pick for me. 
If you would like to see any other kind of challenges, let me know in the comments down below. Or if you would like to submit a certain type of room that you want to see me create, let me know as well, because maybe I can do something with that too. Now, after painting the entire walls white, and I just used white gesso for this, not even a, an actual acrylic paint, but just gesso, I'm going in with a little brush and some gray chalk pastel so i bring out more of that detail with my laser cutter i cut this little side table uh, stand and i love how this turned out however i cannot share a pat pattern with you right now mainly because the program i used to create this um, table in is for the x tool and it's not not an stl file and I also would like people that do not have a laser cutter to be able to create this one. So, or the furniture in general that I make. So in the future, when I make new furniture pieces, I will try and not do this in uh, the laser software, but actual uh, Photoshop or something like that. So I can share it with everyone and everyone can use the patterns then. Also made a little bed and same for this one. I will leave all the dimensions in the description box below. So if you would like to recreate it yourself, you can. But right now I do not have a pattern for you. I'm sorry. I'm painting the entire cabinet white as well. And I just love how bright this all turned out. With a gold acrylic paint, I am adding some details to the pieces as well. Create the headboard of the bed. I made myself a little template with two holes in it so I can cut around a piece of cardboard and then puncture the holes inside of that. This way I'm sure that the holes are evenly spaced I am then attaching some sticky tape to the cardstock because I don't want the cardstock to rip. And then attaching this piece of cardstock to some batting material. This is used for quilts and all that. And I think I applied three layers and I am applying that with Fabri-Tac glue. If you are wondering what kind of materials I use, I will leave everything that I can find in the description box below. I am then placing the final piece that I want to show on the outside over the top of that little layer cake that I made. And um, then I'm adding French knots to the headboard. These are kind of acting as knots or as uh, buttons really. and. It is small enough for it to be a button and easy enough for it to work into miniatures and attaching that to the headboard and then around that I'm putting a piece of string it's um, a raffia or something like that um, it's made of paper and painting that gold and then attaching that with some wood glue I am going to use a very simple household sponges for the mattress and I'm going to use the top green parts. It's not as squishy, but it's nice and firm for a mattress. And I'm just going to cut that to size and attach the parts that I cut to each other with hot glue. Works perfectly fine. And then layering that again with the bedding. Once I am happy with the mattress, I'm going to cover the mattress with a white piece of cotton. I'm first attaching that with a very simple glue stick so I can move it around a little bit. And then the final flaps that go on the underside, I attach that with Fabri-Tac glue to make sure that it really, really stays together.
For the sheet that is going to be on top of the mattress, I start with hemming it with Fabri-Tac glue, but I do sew it later on. I just hem the edges with Fabri-Tac glue to make it easier for myself. And here I am trying to wrap it around and then I will tuck it under the mattress and then put it onto the bed. And because I have that lattice base, I can easily tuck under the sheet by pulling it with tweezers underneath the mattress. And here I'm showing you that little bit of stitching that I've done. And then underneath here, we can pull that tight. I am not done with the bed yet because I want to make an actual quilt. I'm taking a piece of cotton, a piece of quilt batting and another piece of cotton and I'm going to sew them together. And I loved making this and the result is cute and it just looks like a real miniature quilt and it just makes me very, very happy. Just turning that inside out with a crochet needle so all the points are inside out and neat and tidy and then I need to make an ottoman and I start by using a toilet roll for this but I believe I skipped that idea and then I move on to just drawing some circles cutting them out and then cutting a strip of cardstock and then gluing that around the circle. So you can also use uh, a toilet roll, but this for me stayed more in a round shape and the toilet roll didn't really, it kept warping. So um, I'm just going to cut a piece of sponge here. I only need a little layer and then I'm going to glue that on top of one of the circles and then cutting around that to trim off the excess, put some batting on it and then the fabric that I want to use. Now this is a little ottoman and I'm gluing on the fabric with some hot glue and then around the sides I'm putting this pretty fabric and then also a ribbon. I decided to just make an ottoman and not a chair because in the end I didn't want to over clutter the bedroom so I just went with this a side table a bed and an ottoman for the furniture and then putting the pretty ribbon around it to finish it off and the beads at the bottom for legs I really like how this little thing turned out so easy but so effective and then I sewed some fabrics. I had a hard time choosing the fabric for the curtain because um, I didn't want it to overpower the room. And then as a finishing touch, I actually crocheted a miniature like quilt that goes over the bed as well. And um, it's tiny, uh, very tiny. This is a uh, two strand floss or embroidery thread whatever you want to call it and i've worked on this quilt for like a week in between that i was building this miniature also made a little pillow and i filled it with some uh, pebbles because i couldn't find my um weight beads that you can usually put inside toys also made this crocheted pillow and this pillow is going inside there so it's weighted so this way it just sits down and holds its position and looks a little bit more natural and continuing on that crochet blanket it's a granny square blanket and it seriously it took a lot of time and effort to make this um it, like i said i've worked on it for a week in between making this miniature because i wanted it so bad on this bed and here's the final result i really hope you enjoyed this build and again, let me know in the comment section down below if you like this challenge and if you want me to continue this series of uh, non-movie related miniatures. I'm really happy with how it turned out and I hope you enjoyed watching it. All my social media can be found in the description box below. And if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell notification button. It really helps me out and you won't miss out on any future videos if you do. And of course, become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.